Welcome back, my jet pine cones. How you doing today? Chris here. We're going to talk about the Monkey Ace. Now, this guy's actually not that complicated overall, and this should be one of my quickest videos, hopefully. Uh, the weirdest thing about him is that we don't use him all that often, um, and the uh, low tiers really aren't very effective. Uh, basically, if you're going to get a Monkey Ace, you're probably going to go for some sort of third tier or fourth tier upgrade for this guy. But as a 0, zero what he does is he shoots out 8 darts, and uh, each one of these darts can uh, pop up to 6 balloons. So, like, the total amount of possible popping power is actually really high, but the amount that we actually get is pretty low. So if I did send out 999 red balloons or something like that, if we hit, um, well, hopefully my darts can hit over here, man. We're going to be getting six balloons per shot. Um, it's a lot better if I do this with zero spacing right here, guys. Um, and then once we see one dart hit, we can see uh, it's going to go up by six every single time. Um, it's just the chances of it hitting is, is usually pretty freaking low. And that's why we, we ended up not using these lower level monkey aces all that much. But they are important to understand for the random missions and stuff like that that we may end up having to use these guys a little bit more often. Uh, moving on, though, we got the rapid fire. So now we're shooting, well, faster. We shoot... Um, Faster than normal is what it says. All right, cool. So that sounds like it's awesome, and we do. We shoot a little bit faster. It's nothing insane. It's just a little bit of a bonus over here. We're probably not going to use it very often. It's just uh, the pathway that we need to take to get to the good monkey aces. Now, we'll be talking about our quote-unquote targeting later on. Um, once we get to the circle path, or the uh, the centered circle path, uh, eventually. But for now, I'm just going to leave it always as a circle path. Um... Then we can go, so after we get rapid fire, then we can go to loads more darts. So what does it mean by, or lo, not loads, lots more darts. What does that really mean? It means we're going from 8 to 12. So I don't know if that's a load, all right, guys? I don't know, going from 8 to 12 is really a big load over here. But, uh, you know, definitely a bonus over here. Now we're finally getting to the point where we're, we're going to be becoming a decent monkey ace. We can actually start doing pops over here. We're attacking faster, we throw out more darts, like we can actually clear out some of the balloons on the screen, especially on these longer maps like this. Eventually, once we get to those really, really short maps where there's only like a little line through it or something like that, the monkey ace is going to be almost worthless. Even higher tier monkey aces are going to be pretty bad. The fighter plane is actually pretty interesting over here. Um, if we read about this guy, he flies fast and he launches anti-Moab missiles. So this gives him a speed bonus over here. That's the basic thing that we want to talk about. And the Moab missiles. Now, the speed bonus doesn't really matter all that much to me. I don't think it helps at all, but maybe? I don't, I don't really know what the point of that is. But the Moab missiles are actually pretty freaking sweet over here, man. Great way to take down these earlier Moabs in the game, or just give yourself like a little bit of extra Moab pop and power bonus. I, I was always saying in the very uh, beginning of the game, uh, when I first started playing, like, how the heck do we pop these Moabs? There's not very many good towers for these things. But I'm noticing that there's a lot of weirder second tier and third tier towers that give, like, small bonuses to Moabs. They don't insta kill them. They don't, like, bam, take these things down to nothing. But they do do that, like, slight little bonus that really helps us out. So if we set up just a single Moab over here, uh, uh, what we're going to notice is that we've got infinite range. We're going to go shoot two missiles, and each missile does 25 damage for a total of 50 damage per shot. Uh, or 50 damage per like double missile shot over here so four hits to take down a mob that's not bad at all man we do that pretty reasonably often now, of course popping down the balloons inside is definitely not our forte and those missiles don't attack anything but the Moab class balloons. But even against something like a BFB or something like that, like we can do some pretty insane damage over here. These BFBs are pretty slow. That's 200, 250, 300. And this guy's only got 700 health total. So you see how we can take this thing down pretty gosh darn quickly. And this is with no other towers in support of him. Um, you're also noticing that we do grouped damage over here. What? Are you kidding me, dude? Do we really do the grouped damage? No. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. It's like a decent amount of group damage, but it's not a full amount of group damage. We go one, two, three, and four. No, it's not group damage. I'm sorry. I thought it was group damage. Though maybe for a second, man, it was group damage. He was attacking all of them separately. So uh, yeah, only 50 max. Eh, it's kind of upsetting, but uh, uh, definitely a decent tower for sort of like middle middle of the road game, man. Round 40, round 50, maybe even round up to 54, 60. Um, definitely a decent tower to have in your arsenal over here. Uh, moving on to the Operation Dart Storm. Now, this is the, the, the Dart Monkey, or the uh, Monkey Ace that most of us, 
like strive for. Most of us just love this monkey ace. We, lo we love to get the Operation Dart Storm, shoots out crap tons of, of, of darts, and shoots them out very quickly. What he does is he shoots them out twice as fast and goes from shooting 12 shots to shooting 16 shots. So, uh, yeah, 16 dots, darts per volley and twice as fast. Um, how good is he? He's actually pretty freaking good, man. He can actually do damage to mob class balloons, and, and the thing is, he's, he's much better against group balloons as well. So even the balloons inside that we were having trouble with earlier, bam, shazam, we take these guys down. That was just a single mob we took, but took down by ourselves. And then, of course, if you spam a bunch of these guys, we're still really good against them, because we're going to be doing damage to all the balloons on the screen. Um, you know, our darts just go basically forever. All the way to the edge of the screen, we're going to do tons of damage over here. We're not going to take down every single one of the balloons, but if you look at our pop count, it's pretty ridiculously awesome for the amount of money that we spent on this guy so far. Overall, I like him as a tower, and he's probably my favorite monkey ace. Probably. Um, but we still got to talk about the rest of him. Now, the Sky Shredder. We're, we're spending a pretty decent amount of money at this point. Almost 40 grand for the Sky Shredder. He just looks insane. I mean, if you actually just look at these things, it's like, what? Dude, he shoots so freaking fast. Not only does he shoot fast, but the darts fly super duper fast. So he just looks freaking cool. So if I send another, like, 10 mobs against these things... See how much better we're doing this damage over here, man. We shoot the missiles faster. The damage is just insane. We're doing, uh, uh, looks like three damage per dart over here. What? Really? Yeah, we do three damage per dart on top of, I believe, all right, this is actually a little bit on the small side, but I believe it only goes through nine balloons per shot. And the way I can show this is, uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully this works out here. We get this Sky Shredder. I'm going to set up 999 red balloons with zero spacing. And we're going to see if we can see how fast the pop count is going up here. If we just look at this, 9, 18, 27, 36. So whenever we hit, we're going up by 9. So each dart only goes through 9 balloons, but we do do triple uh, uh, pierce. So if I sent out um, 999 greens instead, or is only 2 pierce? Oh, it looks like there's only 2 pierce, man. Going only down to, down to reds. All right. Only doing 2 damage. So what are we doing, 18? 18 per shot? Yeah, 18 per shot. Okay, it's very hard to tell when you get, like, millions of balloons calling, going all over the place over here. It looks like about 18 per sh per dart hitting these uh, balloons right here. That was weird. I thought it was three layers. I'm just, I'm just curious, man. So we're taking ceramics down to blacks. That's three layers. And then the yellow's down to... Oh, yellow's down to blues. Okay. All right, that makes sense, guys. All right, excuse me, man. It's only two layers per shot, not three layers per shot. But definitely doing a lot of damage to these balloons. Uh, the more balloons are on the screen, the better this guy is going to be. If you have, uh, you know, I don't know, 150 Moabs coming out or something like that with a spacing of one or even two, uh, this guy's going to do an insane amount of damage. See, the missiles are really going to town over here. He's, uh, he's taking down all these balloons. He does have limits to the amount of pop power that he can do. Uh, but you can just look at the pop count, you're like, whoa, 33, 35, oh, we're getting thousands of pops every second or so. This guy's awesome. But not being unstoppable is definitely something that we have to keep in mind with this guy. He's not unstoppable. So let's clear all these balloons and then start talking about the next levels of monkey aces. Now we've got the exploding pineapple, which is just a piece of poop. Um, he pops 41 balloons per shot total with my weird testing that I did to see how much damage he did. That's what he did, 41 tested it out and I did it two times and that's what he does so goofy and he only pops through one layer overall pineapple is probably one of the worst upgrades for the monkey ace overall they should probably shoot out about three times as fast to make him even reasonable as a tower I just don't like it I know it's cheap but like it's just like no no you, we just don't do this the only reason we would buy this is if we wanted to get a spy plane it's another fairly cheap upgrade over here so uh, overall, the amount of money that we're spending on this Monkey Ace total really isn't that much. You know, normally we're spending, you know, 550, an extra 500 bucks, an extra 3,000, like we're spending a ton of money to get these 3rd and 4th tier towers, where these are all cheap, cheap-tastic upgrades. Even going up to the Bomber Ace over here, only 425 bucks to get this guy, uh, but I feel like he's also sort of lackluster. You're getting what you're paying for is basically what, you're, what we're saying here. You're only spending 400, 500 bucks. You're not going to get something absolutely insane. The, the main thing is, is that he misses way too much. Uh, if I just sent out, I don't know, some rainbows or something like that, like, 
the, the amount that he misses over here is just kind of ridiculous. On top of not being able to pop blacks and zebras and all that other stuff, it's like you, you really are getting what you pay for. We're not getting that, that many pops over here. Even with a monkey ace popping, who's supposed to pop bajillions of freaking balloons over here, he's doing some, sort of a, a crappy job overall. But uh, he's not bad. Um, I just I probably won't ever actually like use him in a real game. I think the randomness aspect for me is like a huge downfall. Sometimes you can have towers that are really really random, like the fourth tier. Uh, but because he shoots so much, it almost becomes unrandom. You know what I mean? Like he's shooting so often that we know that he's going to do a certain amount of pops and a certain amount of damage no matter how many balloons are coming out. With this guy, he can miss like crazy. We could have a, a, a huge beefy rush coming out, and he could still end up missing with every single one of his bombs. It's like, okay, well, that just freaking sucked. The randomness aspect of the, the Monkey Ace can be sort of bad. Moving on to the Ground Zero. Now, this is an ability over here, guys. We've still got the, the bombs coming out and everything. It's actually kind of cool because, uh, as I was saying earlier, the Zero One, Zero Two, and Zero Three upgrades are all pretty cheap. So getting up to a ground zero really doesn't cost you all that much money. It's not like we have to buy a crap ton of upgrades to get to that guy. We just buy a couple of cheapity cheap upgrades, then we can buy the ground zero for a fairly cheap price. What the ground zero does, he affects infinite balloons. So if I send out 150 BFBs or something like that, it doesn't really matter how, how many are coming out. Uh, if we ground zero these guys, we will do the 700 damage to these things and take them all down to Moab's. Alright, so... We're doing a good amount of damage to these guys. We do do infinite damage to no matter how many balloons are on the screen, which is awesome. But only doing 700 damage, we can't take BFBs down to nothing. We take them down into Moabs. All Moabs and all DDTs will get popped down to nothing, but Zoma God, bad damage is actually pretty bad with a ground zero. So, what this guy's really used for is just a little bit of extra uh, help for you. On those really, really tough rounds, around 90 to 100, if you're having any issues against DDTs or big beefy BFBs or something like that, use this thing, clear out some balloons, and let the rest of your defense go to town. Uh, moving on to the Zarbamba. All right, so this is actually a pretty cool one. Now we're doing 3,000 damage. So that means, uh, you know, obviously all of these balloons over here are going to be completely annihilated, man. No problem. Ceramics, Moabs, BFBs, it doesn't freaking matter. But the Zoma Gods will be a little bit too strong for us. Um, what we do is we do 3,000 damage per Zarbamba. And um, what that means is we kill all these things and then damage the Zomai Gods. On top of that, we stun them as well which I think is really freaking cool. Uh, and they stun for a pretty decent amount of time as well. That's not no like little chump change amount of time, man. Now, that's a decent amount right there. Uh, it allows all of our other towers to do more damage, be more effective, and just overall, I love this tower. I haven't even used him in a real game yet, which is sort of upsetting. I actually want to use him. The only problem is, is of course, it's an ability. It does have that cooldown, and it may not come back at the right time for you, man. So that's the only issue you might have with this thing. I'm going to have to think ahead and plan ahead with this guy. Moving on to the last little uh, Monkey Ace uh, pathway over here. We've got the bottom path. Okay. So we got sharper darts. So it goes from popping 6 to popping 8. So we're getting a little bonus over there. Only 25% though. Not a huge deal, but at least it's helping us out a little bit. And then centered path. So centered path is a goofy thing because it costs money and makes the Monkey Ace worse. Usually. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, the problem is, is if you look at the three, di the four different paths that we can take now, we can go on the circle path, which is just sort of a smaller circle, uh, right where the Monkey Ace's uh, pad is, his uh, launch pad or whatever, his um, thing is, it's a small little circle. Once we get to uh, figure eight, uh, we get a nice small little figure eight over here. Okay, once we get to uh, or the infinite figure eight or the figure eight, Figure infinite is what they call it. Oh man, it looks so goofy when he just bloop, bloop, flops around like that. Like a little floppity fish over here. Um, they're, uh, they're the same size, they just switch orientation from sideways to eight ways <laughs> to uh, vertical over here. And uh, then the centered path, though, it is centered in the middle of the map. Like this is the middle of the map, and this is the center path, just goes completely around that thing. But it's huge. 
uh, it's too big. Uh, if it was the size of a circle path, but in the center, it would be okay. But because it's so huge, it ends up actually being almost a bad upgrade in most situations, and I probably won't use him on centered path in most situations. Now, there are areas where this can help you out. For example, if you're like, oh, I don't have enough room in the middle of the map, man. Well, I need to buy the centered path over here, and now I can have my monkey fly in the middle of the map instead of flying out in some weird goofy circle path flying off the screen and everything. So that's where it's helpful. You don't have to take up the, uh, the uh, important space in the middle of the map. Uh, you can save that for your super monkeys and your alchemists and all of your other towers over here. Well, this guy can just be your um, um, just random crap space over here. So that's where it's sort of good, but at the same time, it usually makes your monkey aces worse, and I actually recommend not putting him on centered path, but rather picking a decent spot for his pad and then uh, putting him on either figure eight uh, or figure infinite. Either way. Um... Both of them are pretty good. Uh, Circle's not too bad either, but I th I've, I've tested it out, and uh, the figure infinite and the figure eight are actually slightly better than the circle path, just in case you guys are curious, or the centered path. So, with infinite balloons coming out, though, I gotta say that, with infinite balloons coming out, um, it just worked out just a little better on, on this map as well, and maybe different on other maps. Moving on to the third tier. Okay, we get never miss targeting, so now... Well, we never miss, man. I don't even think that's true, because I think we can miss pretty easily. But uh, you can see the darts are really going to town on these things. Uh, we're basically getting the max popping power that we can out of our, our, our tower over here. We don't shoot that many darts. We don't do amazing damage. But what we do do is pretty solid. We sort of just clean up some of the balloons on the screen. And that's not bad, man. Definitely a fun upgrade for us. Probably won't use it in too many real games. But at the same time, I like having him in here, man. He's good. He's cool. Then we talk about, oh baby, the 5th tier Spectre. This guy is a rock salad beast from the east. This is the Spectre. He's amazing against freaking balloons over here, guys. This is rainbows coming out. This is ceramics coming out. Um, what the heck? He's popping all these balloons. Look at that pop count, man. It's awesome. He's just rocking these things. We sent out round 63. This is a, one of the craziest balloon levels in the game. And we're just like, oh, guess what? Screw you. We take it down. Like, no no issues whatsoever. This is a pretty cheap tower to be able to do that much damage against the balloons. So this is probably one of the best balloon pop power towers in the game. And guess what? He's still not bad against Moab class balloons. So if I send out 150 Moab class balloons over here, it might be a little too many for us. But you can see that we do the damage to the balloons inside. We're still doing damage to the Moab class balloons and everything. And uh, overall, he's just a, he's a solid tower. If you just look at the pop count, you can just see it skyrocketing over here. This is this is a fifteen thousand dollar tower doing this much freaking damage. And in fact, I I don't know, man. Maybe there is a way on like a uh, deflation boat or something like that to do the specter and maybe a couple druids and uh, maybe be able to do the uh, max damage that you want to do over here. Pop this guy in with uh, either rapid fire and loads more darts. Ooh, and then get some camo detection on this guy. Holy crap! This guy could get intense, man. Intense in the membrane. And then don't tell me, man. There really is a stronger tower than this. The Flying Fortress of Doom? I've always got to add a Doom on there. I don't know why. It just it sounds right. You can't just have the Flying Fortress. He's the Flying Fortress of Doom. You know? It just that's, That is what he is. Uh, This guy's solid as well. Uh, you know, let's just send up Moabs just to kind of do a comparative to feature over here. You see, we struggled against the mobs a little bit with just a Spectre, but with this guy, oh, oh, we take these things down like a freaking breeze, man. Look at this pop count. Oh. All right, let's let's pause these guys. Let's not have BFBs instead, and uh, just see if we can take all these guys down as well. You can see uh, uh, a ridiculous amount of bombs coming out of this guy on top of having all these darts on top of just being really freaking strong. He's beast. He really is. He's awesome. Um, it makes sense for his price though. He's over a hundred thousand dollars for this guy. And you definitely got to keep that in mind. If you're ever affording $100,000 on a poppable or on chimps mode or something like that, well, you did something ridiculously awesome right there to make that happen. So you kind of deserve to just chill for the rest of the game with this guy. And that's what he's good against. He's good against balloons, good against mobs, good against BFBs. This guy's just an all-around beast. Uh, he's solid. And uh, if you can ever afford him, go for him, you know? I mean, like, a lot of the fifth-year towers are like, okay, 20, 30 grand, all right. We can get this guy if we just save up a little bit of money, 100,000 plus. That is not easy to save up for. So, uh, just to reiterate really quick, usually I like the figure infinite or figure eight 
uh, for most of my monkey aces if I put them in a decent spot. Um, Circle Path can work too, but I usually like these just a little bit better. Circle Path just seems a little bit too big for me, even even just as a Circle Path, it's pretty big, you know? This guy just, he stays really close to the center of the map usually if you do this, and uh, stays close to the balloons basically, and the closer you are to the balloons, the more, more damage you're going to be doing overall. Uh, what monkey aces would I normally build in my game? Usually, I like the third tiers. So either the top path third tier, uh, no, excuse me, fourth tier. Operation Dart Storm, or the fourth third tier, or fourth tier bottom path. These are the two guys that I really, really enjoy over here. Um, combining them together is definitely not necessary. Uh, in fact, I don't know. It's almost like a, a stepping stone. If you're gonna if you're gonna end up building a monkey ace, start off with one of these guys, so you can clean up some of the balloons and most of the balloons, and still do some uh, moab damage and such. And as soon as you can, kind of just upgrade up to a specter. You know, that seems like a pretty fair way to do it. Uh, beyond that, though, there's really not that much going on with the monkey ace. You can use abilities as you want, but the bomber race and this rapid fire and the load more darts are just like a little bit of bonus over there. They're really not something we're going to use. We're always going to go for the third or fourth tier monkey aces if we actually want to beat our games. Uh, I guess just to prove it to you guys, we're going to try out. Uh, we're going to try out a little bit of a little baby test here to end off the video. We're going to do uh, two monkey aces right here. Again, this is not perfect. But I think it's good enough for us for today. We're going to get a uh, Never Missed Harding on Centered Path. Look at the Rapid Fire and Load More Darts as well. We're going to get the Centered Path with Never Missed Harding, Load More Darts, and then we're going to get them on a Figure Infinite Path. This guy, we're going to go up to a 4th tier 4 2 Centered Path. This guy, we're going to get him up to a 4 0 2. Uh, let's, do a, let's do a Figure Infinite on this one. Still not perfect, but I think it's good enough. And then we're going to set up 999 of those uh, invisible blues that cannot be popped. We'll do a spacing of one. Send these guys out. We're just going to kind of let them go to town for a little while. And what we really want to see is we want to see uh, uh, how many pops we're getting in the end. I'll probably delete them at some point just, just for, for fun, but... Uh, See how many pops we're going to get, and which one's actually going to win. Will that circle path be better, or the centered path be better than the figure infinite, or figure 8, or anything like that? Like, I could put this guy on uh, uh, figure 8 instead, but I'm just going to leave him on figure infinite, because I think it's better for this map. Or, better for this positioning, rather. Alright, we're going to delete these in just a second, and then look at the pop count. Delete! Alright, so now, with the uh, never miss targeting, it shouldn't even freaking matter, right? wrong. We've got more pops with the figure infinite than the circle, than the centered path. If you ask me, I think that speaks for itself. Then, for the uh, other guys, we've got the centered path 13,757 and 15,780. Again, very easily speaks for itself. It seems like the figure infinite is just way better than that centered path in most situations, guys. Alright. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you press that like button for me. I'd really, really appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't. And of course, have a super duper. Just stay.